Welcome to my deep dive into percentage-based keyframes with Greensock. If you come from a CSS background and are used to code that looks like this, you're going to love this. But if you're like me and never quite understood why anyone would want to deal with all these weird percentages over GSAP's timelines, I think you'll be surprised at some of the unique animation possibilities this new syntax brings. Before watching this video, be sure to check out Greensock's Understanding GSAP Keyframes page. It has an awesome video here by Cassie Evans that goes over the three different keyframe syntaxes now available in GSAP. Further on down the page, you're going to find really cool code snippets and also a bunch of interactive demos to show off some of the cool features that we can now do with GSAP keyframes. In today's lesson, though, we're going to focus primarily on percentage based keyframes and we're going to build a very simple animation from scratch. And although the animation and code I'll be using will be much simpler than this, it's what I show you on the journey that will help you better understand how to approach these animations, avoid pitfalls, and appreciate the unique capabilities of this new syntax. So to learn how to use a percentage-based keyframe syntax, we're gonna create this fun little animation where the slime is moving from left to right with this fun little jump in the middle. Now, unlike traditional timelines where tweens are inserted at specific times based on seconds, with keyframes, we're gonna specify the properties that we want based on different percentages of where we are in the animation. I've broken this up into 25% increments to keep things really easy to work with, with most notably the slime being at the apex of the jump at 50% of the animation or halfway through. Once we understand the percentages that we're using for these different keyframes, it's most important that we understand which values we're going to be setting, okay? Now with percentage-based keyframes at 0%, we don't need to set any values because wherever the object is with whatever properties it has, that'll be locked in at 0%. We're really just setting properties that are going to be changing. Make sure I point out that from 0% to 100%, the X value is going to be increased to 320, okay? So from zero to 100, that's gonna move him left to right. While he's doing that, we have Y values that we're going to specify at these different percentage keyframes. So we're gonna lock in the Y of zero here at 25% before he jumps up at 50% to the Y of negative 100. Between 50% and 75%, we're gonna animate back down to this Y of zero. And after that, we're only going to be interpolating this X value. Now, without any easing applied, what you would get is sort of this linear motion, okay? Where we're just going from A to B to C to D to E in a straight line. But what we're gonna do is use easing to sort of curve that line, okay? While the slime is animating up along the Y axis, we're gonna use an ease out to sort of slow him down and when he drops down, we're going to use an ease in on the Y axis so that it starts slow and then is gonna speed up as it drops. So all that stuff I've shown you previously about ease curves is going to be very important here. So now that we have a basic overview of where this slime is going to be at different percentages, let's get into doing it with code. First things first, percentage-based keyframes were added in GSAP 3.9. So if we log out the GSAP dot version, you'll see we do get 3.9 here. What's nice about CodePen is that when you're loading GSAP from this URL, it automatically grabs you the latest version. Very cool. Let's get rid of our console and let's focus on getting this slime to move. The only thing we really need to know about the file setup is that in the CSS, the slime here has position absolute and it's top at 100 pixels, okay? So naturally he would be up here in the top left corner, but we're moving him down to a top of 100 and then we're going to change his position using transform. So technically he still has an X of zero and Y of zero in this position. All right, let's hop back into the JavaScript and we have a basic timeline set up. And what we're going to do is create our first keyframe animation where we're going to move him from left to right. So we'll start off with the two tween and the target is going to be the slime. And here inside our vars object, instead of setting different X and Y values, we're gonna create a keyframes object. And inside of that object, we're going to have our percentage and value pairs, okay? And so pay attention to this syntax. I'm gonna put a keyframe at 100% 
and then that's basically a property and this is going to be another object full of values all right right now all I'm gonna do is set the X to be 320 and what we're gonna get here is something very similar to a two tween that has just an ending value okay you'll see that the slime moves from left to right and all we've done is specify one keyframe which is the last keyframe now you'll notice that this thing plays super fast because it's using the default of 0.5 seconds for all the animations. Outside of the keyframe object, I'm going to set the duration for this animation to be, we'll keep it slow at three. So with it slowed down a little bit, what you're going to see is that there is a little bit of an ease in at the beginning and ease out at the end. That was hard to see with the fast duration. So it's important to note that keyframe animations have a default ease of power one in out, which is different than GSAP's default of power one out. And this brings further consistency between CSS animations and what you're gonna be doing with GSAP's keyframes. So to override that default ease, I'm going to set an ease of none. So now when we run, you're gonna see we have a linear animation as far as the timing goes, okay? It's gonna be constant rate of speed and boom, stops abruptly. So here we have a keyframe animation with only one keyframe and an ending value. Now remember I told you that we don't have to set any values at 0% because we're just gonna use the object's natural position as the start. Well, I just wanna show you what happens if I do decide to set a keyframe at 0%. What I'm gonna do here is say, let's set your Y to be negative 100. And we'll have to put a little comma in here to separate these pairs of values. So now when I run, watch what happens. Boom, he instantly starts at the top, okay? So this is almost like a typical set where the values are set instantly, all right? There is no animation to that Y negative 100. That's where it's going to start. So now let me show you what happens if we put a 50% in there, remember? We want them to be at a Y of negative 100 at 50%, so maybe that'll do what we want. Ooh, okay. There's quite a bit to unpack here. Notice that he does move straight up to that Y of negative 100, or should I say sort of straight. When this animation starts off, the slime is going to be at his normal Y of zero. But as soon as we start scrubbing forward, there's gonna be this sort of upward motion, and then he's going to get to that final Y and continue throughout. And if we watch this a few times over, you may see that the rate of change on the Y axis also sort of slows down when it gets to the end. Moving upwards, it starts fast and then slows out towards the top, and that's again because there's a default power one out ease. We'll deal with that in a little bit, but I just wanna point out that once he gets to this Y of negative 100, he's going to stay there, okay? So halfway through the tween, right in the center, he's at his Y of negative 100 and remains up top while this X tween here continues. If we want him to drop back down, I could technically use this 100% keyframe and add a Y value here of zero, and then we're going to get something that looks like this. It goes up to 50% and then back down at 100%. So there we have a very simple up and down motion while he's moving from left to right. But remember, that's really not what we're going for because we want the jump to start at 25% and end at 75%. But before we get there, there's still quite a bit that we can study with just these two keyframes here. And what I wanna show you next is that since I have both the X and Y in this keyframe, they're both sharing this ease of none. If I wanted the slime to sort of bounce as he's reaching that final Y value, and if I set this ease here to be bounce, um, we're gonna get something very interesting. What is that? That's pretty crazy. Um, we're getting this animation that would be very hard to sort of come up with on your own if you wanted to do that, but accidentally we get this really cool thing going on. And what's happening is that this bounce is bouncing the X all the way across, boom, 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 like this sort of. And for this last part of the Y animation, we're also getting a vertical bounce. So just pay attention to him moving left to right. He goes to the right a bit, and then he's gonna go back to the left, back to the right, back to the left. So the bounce is happening 
on the X and the Y and that's no good, all right? So I just want to show you that combining these two values at the same time here isn't what we would like to do. So you may be saying, what if I put another 100% keyframe in and separated out the Y value? Well, let's do that real quick. We'll set this back to a ease none, and let's add another keyframe here at 100%, and we'll do a Y zero ease bounce. So with two different animations at 100%, look what we're going to get, okay? Wah, wah. You'll see that this one here that we just added, going back down to a Y of zero with a bounce, totally got overwritten by the second one here. So quick little tip, don't use two identical keyframe values. What we can do here though is put in 99.99% or even closer to 100 and it's going to be pretty much right on the money. No one's ever going to notice and check it out. Boom, boom, boom. We get that really nice little bounce as he falls down and we still have that constant left to right animation moving linearly. Now, since we're dealing with the effect of eases here, I'm gonna take one little detour before we go to the final animation. So I'm gonna get rid of this 99% keyframe here entirely, and I'm going to put the Y back in this second one here. So as a refresher, we should have just a very basic up and down animation, okay? Kind of back where we started. But I want to show you that inside the keyframes object, what I can do is I can also set a separate ease property that gets applied to the entire keyframe animation as a whole. Watch this. You'll see now he goes up and look at that angular bounce here at the end, okay? Think of this as the keyframes defining a path that the slime is going to follow and the bounce is being applied to the animation along the entire path, not just one little segment. I definitely recommend that you play with this a little bit on your own because I'm throwing a lot at you here. And in addition, I'm gonna get rid of this ease none and watch this. I'm gonna change this to an ease each. And what that does is almost set like a default ease for each of these keyframes. So you'll see you bounce up top and down below. <laughs> Kinda silly. So in slow motion, as he's moving across, you're gonna have left to right bouncing off that far edge and also vertical bouncing off the top, and they all get kind of combined uh, to make this sort of mess that we have here. And although this isn't what we're going for, I hope this opens up your eyes to the potential that we can have when we have eases combined and working on different properties at different times. It would be almost impossible to do this with a typical timeline. So now that we've experimented plenty, let's go ahead and wrap up this animation the way we want it. So let's go back here. We're gonna get rid of the ease each. We don't need that. And we're just gonna put the ease none back on this keyframe. So now we'll have an animation that you're very familiar with, with the slime going up and then down. But our goal is to start the jump at 25%, curve up to 50%, and curve back down to 75%. Let's get this done. So let's go back to our keyframe object here. And I'm gonna add a keyframe at 25%. And what's interesting here is that I'm going to lock the Y value in at zero, okay? We're not animating to zero. Remember, the 0% keyframe is implied that it has a Y of zero, and then it's going to stay that way till the 25, and between 25 and 50 is where the animation up is going to occur. Let me throw in my little comma there, and then now we should see, ah, we move flat and then go up, okay? So there it is, we have that linear left to right. There my Y is still zero and then it starts moving up. And then we're going from 50% to 100% down to that Y of zero. Well, we don't want the Y of zero there anymore. What we wanna do is add a 75% keyframe and here we're gonna set the Y to zero. So now when I run, we're pretty much almost done except for adding in some easing. We go up and then down and then straight across, all right? So this is what you've waited 15 minutes for, okay? Yes, I could have done this in three minutes for you originally, but I really wanted to take those little detours to show you what we can learn all about keyframes along the way. And I hope you appreciate that.
So if we pay attention to the actual speed this guy's moving at, you'll see that he does sort of slow down on the way up and there's a little bit of a curve, but when he drops, it's almost also like he slows down, okay? And that's again due to the default ease of power one in out here. If I was to put an ease none on both of these tweens, watch what we're going to get. The noise is mine, but you're going to get a very linear rate of change and you're also going to have very angular animation, okay? It's just going directly between those points with no speeding up or slowing down. Now we know the default ease is a power one ease out, which means that on the way up, it's naturally by default gonna slow down as it gets to the top. It's really this dropping down that we wanna work on. And for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use an ease of, we'll say, power one dot in, okay? And what that's going to give us is a little bit of a slowdown on the drop at first. There you go, and it speeds up and hits the ground, all right? So we have a power one out on the way up and a power one in on the way down, and that gives us a bit of an arced motion. Now, if this was a stronger ease, like a power four, what's gonna happen is the rate of change at the beginning of the drop is going to be very minor, and then it's gonna thunk down really quick. So there's a lot that you can do here with playing with the eases to get what you like, all right? In my explorations, I sort of ended up with liking the sign ease for both of them, but it's really close to a power one, so it's really in the eye of the beholder, okay? And another thing that we can adjust as well is the overall timing, all right? I used a slower duration to make it easier to really see what's happening as we're playing back our animations, uh, but I think for this, we knock this down to a duration of two, and we're going to have a really nice little fun, playful animation on our friend the slime here. So I know I've hit you with a lot this week, and I can't say strongly enough, it's one thing to watch Cassie or me show you how to do this stuff, and it's another for you to get your hands in it and do it yourself. So I would say try to take this animation, I'll give you a starter file, and build it up from scratch, all right? You gotta type the code in order to learn this stuff. Next week, I'm gonna come back. We're gonna go over some pros and cons of this approach, and I'm gonna give you some challenges to really put you to the test. Have a great week.